sounds good to me. Good evening, everyone. Call the October 21st, 2019, Delaware City Council regular meeting to order. The clerk will call the roll. Borowitz. Brereton. Here. Crawford. Here. Frank. Here. Freeman. Here. McGee. Here. Porter. Here. Radcliffe. Snow. Here. Stevens. Here. Eight present. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Remain standing for the invocation. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, tonight as the City Council convenes to fulfill our responsibility make decisions on behalf of our community, we ask for your guiding hand. That we be wise in our policies, prudent in the stewardship of our taxpayers' funds, and a true listening ear to the needs of all of our citizens. The world today is seemingly in chaos, and we give thanks for the blessings of our Belvedere community. We are grateful to our public service partners, police, fire, public works, and educators. Their diligence and professionalism make our lives safer and easier. We ask that you watch over them as they watch over us. These things we ask in your name. Amen. <coughs> Next up under number four, we have approval of minutes of the regular meeting of the Belvedere City Council of October 7th, 2019 as presented. They have a motion to approve. Motion by Alderman Snow, second by Alderman Brereton. Questions, comments, or proposed amendments to the minutes as presented. Hearing none, all those in favor of approval will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Brereton. Aye. Crawford. Aye. Frank. Aye. Freeman. Aye. McGee. Aye. Porter. Aye. Snow. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Eight in favor. Minutes are approved unanimously. Under number five, public hearing, we have none this evening, but under number six, under special messages and proclamations, we have a proclamation for Rotary International, and we have Miss Claire Garrett in the audience. Would you like to come up, Claire? How are you tonight? I'm well, thank you. <laughs> proclamation for Rotary International. Whereas Rotary is a global network of 1.2 million neighbors, friends, leaders, and problem solvers who unite and take action to create lasting change in communities across the globe. And whereas the Rotary, Rotary motto, service above self, inspires members to provide humanitarian service, follow high ethical standards, and promote goodwill and peace in the world. And whereas Rotary in 1985 launched Polio Plus, in 1988 helped establish the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, which today includes the World Health Organization, U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, UNICEF, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to immunize the children of the world against polio. And whereas polio cases have dropped 99.9% .9 since 1988, and the world stands on the threshold of eradicating the disease, and whereas to date, Rotary has contributed more than $1.9 billion in countless volunteer hours protecting more than 2.5 billion children in 122 countries. And whereas Rotary is working to raise an additional $50 million per year, which would be leveraged for maximum impact by an additional $100 million annually from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And whereas these efforts are providing much needed operational support, medical staff, laboratory equipment and educational materials for health workers and parents. And whereas, in addition, Rotary has played a major role in decisions by donor governments to contribute more than $8 billion to the effort. And whereas there are over 17,000 Rotary members in more than 48 clubs throughout District 6420, which encompasses much of Northern Illinois that sponsor service projects to address such critical issues as poverty, disease, hunger, literacy in the environment in the local communities and abroad, 
Therefore, I, Michael Chamberlain, Mayor of Belvedere, Illinois, do hereby proclaim October 24th World Polio Day in Belvedere and encourage all citizens to join me and the Rotary International in the fight for a polio free world. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody that sees the pink, purple, pinky painted is, can you hear me? Is no, uh, for mic. the polio eradication. Um, those and children that are uh, in, in, inoculated around the world. Uh, we did drops in the sugar cubes, but we've discovered just recently, you perhaps heard that um, there were two cases from the Philippines just within the last month and two months, I think it is now. So polio has not gone away, and many of you here may know someone from your childhood or someone you know currently suffering with this disease. And uh, Bill and Melinda Gates were mentioned. Uh, for every dollar we donate for, to Polio Plus, they donate two. So that's helped get us to this billion dollar dollar amount. Uh, I thank you all for the proclamation. Um, if you see anybody with the purple pinky, you'll know what it means. And you're welcome to come to our meeting anytime, every Wednesday at noon, at uh, out on uh, off the access road at the um, American Legion. 12 o'clock, lunch is on us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. Thank Thanks you. for all you do. <laughs> Gives you hope for the world. People do things like that. Under number seven, approval of expenditures, we have general and special fund expenditures in the amount of $1,977,974.03. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion by Alderman Snow. May I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Alderman Crawford. Questions, comments concerning any of the expenditures? Alderman Freeman. Thank you. Um, I have, again, several questions. Sometimes it pains me to ask the difficult questions, but I don't feel like I would be doing my constituents due diligence if I wasn't the best alderman I could be. So, um, page 12, I wish Chief Woody were here. Um, but I guess you can answer. Um, so down at the bottom, Denny's car hauling, um, these are all tow charges. Um, or do we have squads that break down on the side of the road? Or, you know, why are we towing all these squads? And why is the first one um, $1,775 because we paid storage on it? Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with the $1,700 uh, charge at this particular time. It is common, unfortunately, that our squads uh, occasionally do need to be towed uh, due to uh, breakage, due to breakdowns, whether that be in the roadway or in the back parking lot of the uh, public safety building. Um, I can certainly check into the $1,700 uh, uh, charge there. Um, and uh, they also may be for asset forfeiture vehicles as those occasionally have to be towed as well. Okay, um, and then on page 15, these, uh, the Tri-City Emergency, they're removing equipment. I'm assuming that um, all four of these squads are being retired and they're being stripped of their, um, their police equipment? That is correct. And most of that equipment, that uh, any equipment that we can recycle into the next vehicles, we do so. So, page 17 then. Um, Jack Wolf, uh, I believe that Squad 29 is accident repairs for $4,603. Uh, yes, that was a result of a crash. Okay, so um, last month, we also had a uh, high expenditure of $5,037 at Barnes Auto Body for an accident repair. And a constituent called me and said that currently we have a squad that's 
smashed up at uh, the Boone County Auto Body West on Locust Street. So are, are we like getting in an accident once a month? And um, are these involving other vehicles? Uh, yes, these are, generally speaking, these are involving other vehicles. And I believe at least the last three or four crashes that we've had have been uh, non-at-fault uh, crashes by our officers. Uh, the one you're referring to at uh, Barnes Auto Body was a situation where that vehicle was uh, T-boned by the uh, other vehicle. Okay, so then assuming that our squads are insured, um, the other drivers then would have to pay other than our deductible to have those repaired, correct? So do we have a super high deductible? So uh, I'll answer a couple of the questions. Uh, if a vehicle is totaled, our insurance company has to come out and look at it. So if they cannot come out right away, then it is stored, and that's why you pay storage. Um, our insurance company will pay minus a $500 deductible. That's what our deductible is for our automobiles. Then we go after those who have hit the squad cars, and we have had a number of those this year, and then we get the deductible back as well. Okay, so at these expenditures actually will probably will get those back. Right. Okay. Um, I guess moving on to page 21, um, that would be our fire chief. Uh, the uh, legacy fire apparatus repairs and maintenance for um, chassis service for $4,978.82. Is that a repair or is that just like maintenance, like a lube job and or whatnot? That's, that's maintenance, um, yearly maintenance for that, that particular oil change, lubrication, and anything they find that they fix it for us. Okay. Um, and then on 25, This is uh, Police and Fire Commission. Um, it appears that we're doing um, pre-employment exams. And one of them, Mr. Hendrickson's, is totaled up to like $1,400, where um, Mr. Kasparovic's is only 343 Is that because one's police and one's fire? Or is Mr. Kapovic not as far along or why is the huge discrepancy in the pre-employment I don't have page number 25 so you may not have all of the bills on this bills payable um, you are correct one is police one is fire they may do different evaluations on the police and fire um, they're typically though about fifteen hundred dollars okay we also do a psych some of some of these tables here are for Sykes as well. Okay. So then on page 40 under forestry, um, there's $18,928 for tree removal. Do you, how many trees have, did we cut down for, for that? Is that like a yearly thing or is that we cut down a whole bunch of trees last month? Um, well, that's a, uh, Usually, typically, what will happen is we'll put the generate the list of the trees to come down, and then we give it to, the, to them. And then when they have a sufficient list and they get it scheduled, then they come out and they'll do it. So it's several trees, and it's based on the unit pricing. All of our tree work is based on unit pricing per inch diameter. Okay. And my last one um, is from Capital Funds, page 53. Um. There's a JLA Limited miscellaneous expense for completion of bronze for $30,000. What, do you know what that is about, Becky? I'll take that. that. You can take that. Uh, that is the statue, Jack Wolf statue. The money passed through City Hall. So we wrote the check to the sculptor and Jack reimbursed the city. Oh, okay, because I was gonna say, I thought, I thought that that came from yeah. the Wolf Family Foundation. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Any other yeah, questions? They had to pay somebody. <laughs> yeah. Um, additional questions or comments concerning general fund expenses? Yes, Alderman Porter. Uh, this one's for Becky, I guess. 
On the um, first page of the credit card receipts, or credit card uh, statements here, they've got um, Hilton Hotel Chicago, the IML, for $1,000. I was just wondering how many days that represents. Uh, that was three nights and the, the cost. It was 267 a night plus taxes. I was there four nights. I paid for one of the nights myself. Anyone else? Okay. So I have a motion and a second. We've answered questions. All those in favor of approval, roll when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Eight in favor? Passed unanimously, which then takes us to water and sewer expenditures of $535,657.06. Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Motion by Alderman Crawford, second by Alderman Porter. Questions, comments about any of these expenditures? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval, will when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Eight in favor? Motion is approved. And if I may uh, address <coughs> Porter's previous question. Every year when we pass the budget, we put $10,000 aside for the IML convention, which pays for any alderman that wish to attend also. And no one elected to attend this year. Um, and I obviously am going to attend because I'm an officer of, of the IML. Okay. Under number eight, committee reports and minutes of city officers, please notice that items A through H have been received and placed on file, which brings us to item I, minutes of the Committee of the Whole, Building Planning and Zoning and Public Works of October 14th, 2019. May I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Motion by Alderman Crawford. Second by Alderman Frank. Questions, comments, or further discussion? Proposed amendments to the minutes as presented. Hearing none, all those in favor of approval. Well, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Eight in favor? Minutes are approved unanimously. Brings us to item nine, unfinished business, which is ordinance 470H, a second reading, an ordinance amending section 110-91, stop streets of the City of Belvedere Municipal Code to add Garfield Avenue at West 5th Street as a two-way stop. May I have a motion to approve? Alderman Burton. Alderman McGee. Questions, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, will when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. Eight in favor? Ordinance 470H is confirmed unanimously. Under B, uh, we had put the NICOR uh, issue on uh, the table and we will leave it on the table. We're still negotiating with uh, NICOR and Azavar. So that brings us to 10 new business. We have one silent reading, which I will read publicly for the folks at home. It's concerning Ordinance 471H, a first reading, an ordinance granting a special use to permit a planned development within the Central Business District, a container park at 300 South Main Street. This will come back for further discussion and voting. Yes, sir. Can I just ask a quick question? I was just curious what a container park is. Oh, it's a park, and you can bring your empty containers and throw them in there. No, no. Yeah. I, it's a... Uh, Gina, you want to describe it? Um, it sounds worse than what it is. So 
uh, the large shipping containers <laughs> that you see um, in the docks, they get retrofitted. They, um, you get, you put doors in them, you put windows in them, and they are for like pop-up shops. So say um, there's someone that does photography at their house and the house is chaotic and they'd rather rent the storage container for the day and turn that into their studio. Or people that have the crowd sales 30 times a year, maybe they should be renting those on the weekends and selling out of those. Um, you can have birthday parties out of them. There's going to be a large seating area and pavilion, so you could have outdoor activities, maybe even a band. Uh, one of the containers will be retrofitted as a restroom. Another one will be retrofitted as a concession stand. Uh, Buchanan Street Strolls, if it rains out, we can move it in there. Uh, farmer's Market could set up there. Each you know, produce vendor could have a container. There's one in Chicago. I think they call it Boom Park Chicago. Um, that's a good example. There's one in Toronto. They're becoming really popular in larger cities, um, very trendy, but it's great for those businesses that don't that don't have the backing to, to rent a storefront, to renovate an entire storefront. That's a lot of upfront cost for starting a business. This, you can almost think of it as like a small business incubator. Let them be open on the weekends, let them figure out their business plan, let them build up a customer base, and then move into a storefront. Yes. Two questions or one as a comment. Um, the container that's over on the empty lot advertising for the Buchanan Street um, deal, it was over on the Fairgrounds Road, that has like a door and a window if you wanted to go look if it's still yep, there. Yep, that'd be like a small, it's a smaller container, but yeah, retrofitted in that style. And then uh, the other is when you talk about the restroom, just to get this out of the way, is this going to be a um, city water and sewer or is it going to be a glorified um, it'll porta be, potty? It'll be city water and sewer. Um, he's working on that those connections and drawings now. Everything will still need to meet building and fire codes. They have to have their permits approved. So it's not just going to be dump out a rusty container and move in. They, they're going to have to be retrofitted. They're going to have to meet codes. They'll have to be ADA compliant, all that stuff. Maintain property maintenance code will apply to them. With the success of Stroll, we don't want to stand on our laurels. Uh, she mentioned Toronto and downtown Chicago. We want to be on the cutting edge of this thing too because people of all ages love these things and it will add an additional feature uh, to our stroll thing and be available for hometown Christmas, for heritage days. And the neat thing about it is after it's been up for a while, if you decide there's something else you'd rather put in there, it isn't that big to move. You know, you can relocate them someplace else. So, yes, Alderman Snow. And would they be potentially subject to having upper deck areas that are railed off with stairs to access? Um, I have seen some that have done that. This applicant has not shown interest in that um, because then you're getting into more life safety issues, the railing, the ADA compliance to get upstairs. He hasn't shown interest in that. Um, you know, he bought the property with plans to do one development. There is a significant grade elevation. That's what really halted that development from taking place. It wasn't bad soils. It wasn't EPA. I've seen a lot of rumors floating around out there. It was mostly the grade elevations um, were the too great to deal with. Was going to be extremely long term to meet all yeah. the requirements. So he's looking at this as an investment to do until something else comes along because as the mayor said you unbolt them and you can move them um, it so it's not a permanent installation I think this is project number seven and so uh, Mr. Caldwell has a pretty fair track record with the things he does for downtown so we welcome his participation any additional questions or comments do we want to put this on next week's agenda or uh, do we anticipate more people coming in because i saw there was um two people mr wolf and called paul himself um, commented in the thing so i didn't know if you guys had had more people that were showing interest in saying something that we might want to have a meeting 
of committee of the whole i received one phone call from a gentleman that owns several of the rental properties adjacent to it he just wanted to know if there was like a sound ordinance and stuff like that and i explained that the metal building that's there is not being removed so that building will act as a great buffer and then he had made the comment that he's torn on what to do with his properties does he spend the money to fix them up and then have the train station come and they're going to get torn down anyway or does he let them stay the way they are and use your judgment on that um so he just had questions about how that's going to impact long-term investment and if the train comes stuff um how would that impact that and it may if you know the state does a 180 we get a train station that could be a very nice counterpart to it and then mr wolf spoke in favor i have not received any other phone calls or letters from anyone so at this point there would be no plan to make it an agenda item so anything else okay next we have motions forwarded from the committee of the whole building planning and zoning and public works of october 14th 2019 Motions will be presented by Chairman Porter. Chairman Porter. Motion to approve waiving the building and zoning fees in the amount of $871 for the Habitat for Humanity uh, home at uh, 531 East Locust Street. Motion out of committee. Questions, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion now on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Eight in favor? Motion is passed <coughs> unanimously. Thank you, Chairman Porter. Next, we have motions of public works presented by Chairman Freeman. Chairman Freeman, you have the floor. Thank you. B. Motion to approve the work authorization for construction engineering services from CES Inc. in an amount not to exceed $11,050 for the sanitary sewer manhole rehabilitation project. This work will be paid for from sewer line item number 61-5-820-6040. Motion out of committee. Questions, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion now on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Eight in favor? Motion is approved unanimously. C, motion to approve the proposal from Kleinfelter Drywall and Painting in the amount of $8,250 for repainting the exterior block portions of City <coughs> Hall. The cost of this work will be paid for from line item number 01-5-110-6010, building maintenance. Motion out of committee. Bless you. Questions, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion now on the floor? Alderman Frank. Um, could somebody tell me why it's so much to dry, uh, paint drywall or the, um, the exterior blocks? It's the size of the building, the square footage that's involved. Uh, it'll be have to be primed and prepped uh, prior to painting too. It's all those factors involved. Additional questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor will, when your name is called, say. Excuse me? All those in favor will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Eight in favor? Motion is approved unanimously. D, motion to approve the low bid from Timber Industries LLC in the amount of $9,300 for grinding of the city's branch pile. 
This work will be paid for from line item number 01-5-310-6826. Motion out of committee. Questions, comments, or further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval. Well, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Eight in favor? Motion is approved unanimously. <coughs> e. Motion to approve the low bid from PDC Laboratories for the groundwater monitoring at Belvedere Municipal Landfill Number 1 from July 2020 until August 2021. Motion out of committee. Questions, comments, or further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Crawford? Aye. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Eight in favor? Motion is approved unanimously. F. Motion to approve street closure on October 31st, 2019 from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. with 7th Avenue closed between Star Street and West 5th Street for Belvedere First Assembly of God. Motion out of committee. Questions, comments, or further discussion concerning the motion now on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor will, when your name is called, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. Frank? Aye. Freeman? Aye. McGee? Aye. Porter? Aye. Snow? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Brereton? Aye. Crawford? Aye. Eight in favor? Motion is approved unanimously. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman Freeman. Under number 11, we have adjournment. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Mr. Alderman Crawford, second by Alderman Porter. Questions or comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we are now adjourned. Thank you.